uh, welcome to this particular module. In this module, I will be talking about uh, uh, a very important problem related to heart and that is called atrial fibrillation. Now, generally when you see the heart pumps uniformly, that uniform pumping of heart is because of the uh, synchronized electrical signals, uh, but in certain cases the electrical signal starts uh, misbehaving and in that case either the heart starts pumping very heavily which we call arrhythmia or it starts pumping unevenly or beating unevenly that is because of the misfiring of signal and that is called atrial fibrillation all right. So, uh, if you understand the uh, how the heart uh, we, we generally learn in biology right that uh, what is anatomy of heart. Uh, so, uh, just to uh, recall quickly before we move to that problem um, uh, we will show you the or I will show you the heart uh, the schematic of that and then uh, what is actual problem uh, which is atrial fibrillation. Uh, in, a, in a very short video about 3 minutes and then what are the different ways to cure this particular uh, problem and where are the gaps that we can fill with the help of uh, designing uh, uh, an interesting or innovative sensors. So, that is a complete idea. Uh, so, if you see the screen uh, you will see that the uh, this is something which is we, we are being taught from long time a heart as a aorta uh, and you cannot be, you cannot teach something else because this is how heart is. Uh, we have pulmonary veins, left RTM, right RTM, right ventricle, left ventricle, four chambers as you know right. Inferior vena cova, uh, pulmonary trunk, superior vena cova and then uh, uh, this is just a basic things uh, there is a fiber of ease and lot of other things which we are not getting into detail. Uh, if I play this video it is just uh, like how the heart beats. Uh, uh, but we will I will show it to you in the in detail about that video. Uh, so, uh, if, if you move to the uh, next topic which is the smart catheters, uh, this is what we are we are interested in in uh, fabricating okay, smart catheters. Now, let me let me tell you what exactly the uh, catheter means first and then what is smart means. But before we understand smart catheters or catheter itself we need to understand what exactly the problem with the uh, in this particular case. So, heart diseases are increasing day by day as you know recent studies says that disturbance occurring in a large population of world population uh, and if untreated would result in a life shortening there is a need for accurate and affordable treatment techniques to ensure health quality right. Now, we are talking about AFib or atrial fibrillation which is a heart arrhythmia in which abnormal electrical signals begin in the atria of the heart this is due to abnormal conduction of electrical signals right you can see here if you see this ECG waveform then in this two particular circle you will see there is sudden heartbeat uh, that is a QRS waves right. So, why uh, there are two very closely spaced ECG uh, signals compared to how it should be like this this is because of the misfiring of signal ok. So, I come to uh, how consequences of AFib or what are the uh, difficulties uh, that may arise is that remodeling of heart tissue will occur and then it uh, there can be uh, stroke due to blood clot because of this uneven uh, beating of heart and that blood clot can can go anywhere including the brain and ca can, cause, can cause stroke. Uh, so, the uh, way to treat this is mostly with medications, however, uh, right medications and combination is a very challenging process like any other medication screening is very important problem, how to screen a particular drug and we will be quickly looking at that particular problem as well. And when you talk about uh, uh, treating it then what happens is that the, uh, uh, the surgeon will insert a catheter and will ablate the tissue. Now, we will talk about this uh, after a video uh, so that uh, whatever I am talking you will get it. So, let me play the video. Depending on activity level, the heart beats about 60 to 100 times per minute. It may be higher during exercise or lower at rest. A normal heart rate and rhythm ensures the delivery of oxygen rich blood to all of the body's organs such as the brain and lungs. A group of cells in the heart 
called the cardiac conduction system, uses electrical impulses to control the speed and rhythm of each heartbeat. An abnormal heart rate or rhythm, called an arrhythmia, occurs when there's a problem with the heart's conduction system. Tachycardia is a type of arrhythmia where the heart beats too fast. Fibrillation is a type of arrhythmia where the heart beats irregularly and may be too fast. For certain types of arrhythmias, a catheter ablation procedure may be necessary to stop the heart tissue from causing the arrhythmia. After numbing a small area in the groin with a needle, the doctor will insert a short hollow tube called a catheter sheath into the femoral vein. Next, a long flexible tube called a catheter will be inserted through the sheath. The doctor will guide the catheter to the heart through a blood vessel that goes to the heart called the inferior vena cava. The location and progress of the catheter will be monitored. When the catheter reaches the heart, the doctor will guide it to the area that is causing the arrhythmia. The doctor will find the problem areas using a 3D map of the electrical activity of the patient's heart. The tip of the catheter will emit either hot energy or cold energy to ablate the tissue in this area. Ablation makes the treated area stop working. For an atrial arrhythmia, a doctor will ablate the atrial tissue causing it. If the affected tissues are small, well-defined areas, the procedure is called focal ablation. Or if the affected tissues are larger areas with more complex rhythm disturbances, the doctor may perform a procedure called ablation remodeling. Both types of ablation restore normal electrical impulses and prevent an arrhythmia from happening. If the cause of the arrhythmia is in the ventricle, the doctor can do either focal ablation or ablation remodeling to treat more complex arrhythmias of the ventricle. Okay, so in the video what you have seen, in the video you have seen that a surgeon has to insert a catheter right uh, in the heart and then uh, where the catheter is inserted they look at the electrical signal. So, where is the misfiring of the uh, electrical signal that is called electrical mapping all right. If you have the heart chamber and if I insert a catheter, the catheter is nothing but a tube right. So, tube and then you and at the tip of the tube you have electrodes which are recording electrodes to measure the electrical signal. Now, once you have the electrical signal they, they, they take it the, take the tube out and insert another tube, tube is a catheter. So, they are insert another catheter and then wherever the electrical signal was uh, not correct right that particular region uh, the surgeon will ablate. Now, ablation is nothing but heating right. If you heat the tissue it will burn, if you burn the tissue it will not conduct. Technical term ablation. If I use RF frequency RF ablation because I am using catheter RF catheter ablation right. And when a person ablates or when a surgeon ablates right he or she needs to understand how much force is applied on the heart tissue because when you apply, want to apply RF on the tissue you have to touch the tissue right you, you have to press the tissue and then you have to apply. So, how much force is applied if the force is too much then all the other part which we, we do not need to ablate will get ablated. If the force is less then the recurrence is higher means a person would have a same episode after the surgery is done both cases are not good. So, how to treat a patient correctly? There is something called transmurality. Transmurality is where your when you ablate the tissue it ablates completely right because anyway the uh, heart is also tissue wall right. So, let us say this is the thickness of the wall this is the thickness of the wall. If I am ablating from one side how I am sure that the complete tissue is complete tissue is ablated right. It may only ablate half it may not it may not reach this area right if I ablate from the front it may not reach back. So, if it does not reach back that means the front is uh, burnt but the back is still conducting. 
So, I need to make sure that the entire thickness of the tissue is burnt or ablated and that is called transmurality. How to make sure that uh, the surgery has resulted in transmurality and uh, how much force need to apply. So, that is why very easy is how to design a force sensor. It is a catheter contact force sensor that a uh, lot of people are working on and I will show you two different ways. First is a very simple way of understanding or designing a 3D uh, uh, force sensor, 3D MAMS based force sensor we say. Um, it cannot be used in actual uh, ablation, but the next version uh, in the same uh, topic I will show it to you that can be actually used in ablation. Okay. Uh, uh, you reach to second point only when you start working somewhere, so that is how I will show it to you. So, if you see here um, uh, on the slide we will talk about the 3D MAM space force sensor for catheter contact force, uh, the, the sensor is nothing but a strain gauge on a flexible material. Let us see the process flow of this particular sensor. You start with a silicon wafer and then you have a period PSS uh, over PDMS. So, you, you coat the PDMS, you cure PDMS on that you deposit a spin coat period PSS. Uh, PDMS is flexible material like I have discussed earlier. Period PSS also I have discussed is a strain gauge uh, uh, and then after you do that you can uh, this the silver is used so that to better addition of this particular material uh, uh, which will help in the patterning process. Then you have to pattern this P dot PSS to form a strain gauge you can see here after you do that you know uh, uh, so after you uh, perform photolithography you have to dip this wafer in uh, silver agent uh, followed by P dot PSS agent uh, and then you form the strain gauge. Strain gauge looks like this. Right. It is very simple process single mass process you guys now know how to fabricate a strain gauge uh, with a with uh, using lithography right. Now, once you have this P dot PSS uh, strain gauge you need to attach a bump on this P dot, P dot PSS strain gauge along with gold pads. So, first is this contact pads that you can see here uh, we need to deposit gold and pattern it such that we have a ohmic contact right uh, uh, from the sensor and then we have to attach a uh, PDMS bump. So, how to create PDMS bump for that you need to say this one this particular process flow you have a silicon wafer and in silicon wafer if I create a pit if I deposit or uh, spin coat PDMS cure it and peel it off I will have a PDMS bump simple right silicon wafer silicon pit how to create silicon pit. So, if I take a silicon wafer I oxidize this silicon wafer right and then you create a window create a window using lithography. right you can remove silicon dioxide using BHF then you add silicon if you add silicon what will happen silicon will get edge right what will happen <laughs> silicon will get edge like this ok. This is what is creating of a pit hmm. now if you load PDMS you can remove silicon dioxide. you can remove silicon dioxide by dipping this wafer in BHF and if you load PDMS on this and if I strip this off I have cure PDMS this is PDMS I cure it and strip it off what will I have I will have my PDMS like this if I slice the PDMS then what will I have I have a PDMS bump right this is what is shown here right. So, very simple process is not it. Now, this PDMS bump we will stick it on our PDMS bump we will stick it on our strain gauge 
which is fabricated using P dot PSS. After this you can strip off the PDMS substrate from the silicon and you will have a flexible force sensor easy that is what is flexible force sensor. Now, once you have flexible force sensor what you will do you will take a bead it is a cube small cube like this right and on each side of this cube you will stick one PDMS. So, there are how many slides slide 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 right. One slide you will not use it uh, because you have to attach that sixth slide to the catheter tip all right. So, you will only attach 5 sensors on 5 sides uh, of the cube and this is shown in this particular uh, schematic diagram that you have sensor 1, sensor 2, 3, 4, 5 on all, all the sides you have sensors. You can do very quick uh, COMSOL simulation uh, where how much force you apply and what is the stress factor on the uh, strain gauge right. So, if I have this uh, uh, now if I have the sensors attached on this particular cube then I will have how many contacts? 10 contacts right because each uh, strain gauge will have 2 contacts. All this sensor contacts can be brought out uh, from within the catheter. Now, once you have that first is how you want to understand that or how you know that what is the change in the sensor uh, values for certain force. So, for that what we do is we take a commercial force sensor attached to a micro manipulator and press it on the particular uh, fabricated sensor. When you press it on sensor you will see that on applying of compression force what is the sensor output voltage. Now, instead of measuring instead of measuring resistance we can always use a potential divider to see what is the change in the voltage um, uh, or, or if you use a Wiston bridge accordingly you can see the same change in voltage. So, when you apply a force known force then you will see what is the output voltage from that you will uh, you can get the data for the fabricated sensor. Uh, and from the data you can understand that if there is a certain voltage change that means that it is cor corresponding to that particular compression force right. So, uh, this is very important uh, uh, you know experiment that you need to perform whenever you fabricate any sensor you have to take a commercial sensors and uh, perform the calibration part ok this is called calibration all right. Now, I, if I want to apply a force on to a tissue, if I go for a tissue before that I have to go for a phantom tissue, phantom tissue is not real tissue and phantom tissue can be fabricated with the help of gelatin. So, if I take a box like a metal box in which I can uh, have a gelatin right and uh, I, I take a force sensor uh, which is a commercial force sensor right versus uh, the uh, catheter and I press it on the gelatin then I will see that what is the calculated contact force uh, with sensor output and calculated contact force versus measured contact force. Now, you can very clearly see that uh, this is extremely linear and that is a good thing about a sensor, sensor should show a linear uh, change in the output response uh, uh, for different forces. So, for example, if I apply 5 grams of force and I remove that force what is the response time same the uh, same thing goes for 40 grams of force 60 grams of force then you can see that. Uh, this sensor can measure anywhere from 5 grams to 60 grams and uh, like I said very important problem is how much force you are applying the optimum force is somewhere around 25 grams to 40 grams on the heart all right. So, when the uh, uh, as you have seen the catheter is ablating a t uh, heart tissue that ablation force should not be more than 35 to 40 grams this is optimized force. Okay. Now, uh, uh, when you actually insert the catheter inside the uh, heart right uh, then it has to pass through the blood vessels and that is why how the sensor would act when there is a force of uh, uh, a liquid media um, or medium on the sensor. And for that what uh, this experiment shows is that if you have the catheter and uh, you have several sensors sensor 1, 2 and then water and uh, if, if I move the sensor in x direction or y direction or z direction the corresponding sensors uh, which are attached to the catheter will change its property right. 
and uh, the the what we have given notations are uh, this is let us say f x 1, this is f y 1 and this is f z 1, same thing if you take a sensor 2 then f x 2, f y 2 and f z 2. So, when I uh, perform these experiments I can see that uh, based on where the force is acting I can see that particular uh, uh, you know the the uh, the values are different. For example, f z 1 and f y 2 you can see here uh, it is different right when I apply force in this direction f z 1 is different than f y 2 same thing f z 2 is different than f x 1. So, you can very clearly understand that you can uh, you can delineate the force that is applied on a certain part or if whether it is normal force or whether it is shear force uh, uh, you can delineate and that is very important. So, learning from this all experiments what now we have thought is how we can design an actual catheter that can be used for ablation. This is a manoeuvring system for that particular catheter. Uh, manoeuvring system is how to uh, move the catheter uh, in the real world. There is a knob, there is a top cover, there are thread bolts. Uh, again, you can design this either with 3D printing or you can use uh, other uh, manufacturing techniques. Um, there is a guide pulley, SS tendon, and then there is a vibration motor for haptic feedback. So, let me uh, come back to haptic feedback. Um, I, I told you that there is a force sensor which is required at the tip of the catheter, but at the same time a very important problem that is there or gap that is there in the current catheters are that none of the catheters has a haptic feedback. Haptic feedback means the uh, uh, feeling of force. Right. So, how much force a surgeon is applying on the heart, uh, uh, he or she only can see on the display, but cannot feel the force. So, how about we design a catheter in which you can not only see the force, but also you can see the force and that is called your haptic feedback and uh, that is why we, we will convert the force values to the haptic feedback. Uh, there is a bottom cover and then there is a thread hole but, uh, uh, holder bottom. In between we have also used the nitinol spine. Uh, nitinol is a smart material uh, is extensively used uh, in the new characters and then at the, at the, the, the jacket is consist of the uh, uh, polyurethane and this is the jacket we are talking about here right. So, that the catheter can move or maneuver and this is the uh, uh, catheter tip. If you see the tip there is an ablation electrode then there is a elastic material, there is a sensor PCB and then P pogo connectors followed by the alignment modules all right. This is the uh, uh, sensor design and if I go further then you will see that uh, the blown up diagram of this particular uh, catheter tip, we are only talking about tip which is right over here ok, that is it. Hmm. So, if I talk about the catheter tip then you can see that, uh, that the tip is of ablation electrode which is of metal and then sensor is right over here. So, we are interested in designing this sensor as well. Uh, uh, if you, if you uh, lock it together it looks like this and then you can see here there are some holes this is for the irrigation type of catheters. Irrigation type of catheters are the catheters in which you use the saline media to uh, make a way through the blood uh, medium. Now, based on this uh, we can design several kind of force sensors. Uh, the force sensor that I am showing it to you uh, here is uh, the uh, design one right and then we have design two and then we have design three right. So, design one is that you have the bridges here right, design two you have holes in this bridges here and design 3 you have a meander shape or a coil shaped uh, sensors. Now, uh, actually the, the sensor that we will be using is a diffusion based piezo resistive material and uh, the diffusion occurs right at the tip of this particular uh, uh, bridge like this like this and then there are two here. I will show to you how, how exactly we have designed it, but my point is we have taken this bridge structure and then uh, made a hole in that and then we have used this serpentine structure just to improve the sensitivity. Hmm. The uh, dimensions are given here which is not, not really important for you, but the point is as you can see here we have four strain gauges 1, 2, 3 and 4. If I, if I have a uh, magnified uh, version of that then you can see very clearly the strain gauge which are 4 in number 
here are there. So, 2 uh, they will balance out the another 2 and we can use the circuit with Wiston bridge. Uh, we have tried different uh, uh, designs and this is actually fabricated sensors uh, uh, with us right. Uh, one with directly there is no hole in the bridge, second one is there are two holes and third one is with the uh, serpentine structure right. So, this is how the sensor looks like. Uh, now, uh, if you recall your earlier uh, discussion or earlier lecture in which uh, you were taught ComSol multiphysics simulation using the same ComSol multiphysics you can understand that what can be the optimized design for my force sensor. For example, uh, if I want to know what is the displacement versus bridge length for various bridge thickness then I can give that values and I can get that uh, total displacement versus bridge length from that I will understand what should be my optimized bridge length for the given displacement all right. Uh, same way if I apply a normal force or apply shear force how the sensor would behave that is what is given here. Uh, uh, you see here that when, when I apply normal force almost all this uh, uh, x up, x down, y up, y left, y, uh, y right, right uh, uh, everything is kind of increasing linearly right. Uh, so, stress versus normal force on all bridges as you can see here uh, uh, it is very easy to identify if you once you lower console and here we have shown the displacement map for various bridge thickness at 0.8 Newton normal force on the catheter tip uh, that how each sensor would behave and you can clearly see that the stress is right in the on the bridge because of the stress or strain the resistance would change because these are all piezo resistors right these are piezo resistors all right. So, if I let me let me show it to you very quickly how can you uh, diffuse one single piezo resistor and then you can take it over from there. So, uh, I will just show it to you if you have an oxidized silicon wafer all right oxidized silicon wafer then if I want to let us say uh, this is n type and this is my silicon dioxide right what I will do is I will open a window I am just showing you quickly ok. So, that you understand I will open a window like this in silicon dioxide and then I will spin coat my boron either spin coat there are different ways of diffusing boron uh, or impurities into silicon wafer. Uh, one is a solid way solid uh, then another one is liquid and third one is uh, with gaseous phase. Uh, we will use a liquid phase just for this particular class and in that you can spin coat this boron on this particular uh, silicon dioxide or oxidized silicon wafer with a window uh, that you can uh, see. Now, after this you have to. So, when you when you discuss about diffusion diffusion has two process one is called pre deposition second is called drive in. So, you have to first pre deposit. So, you have to anneal this or heat this around 400 degree centigrade 400 to 500 degree centigrade ok. Once you do that this layer will start like this just little bit into the silicon wafer all right. Now, if I heat this uh, further which is called drive in at a higher temperature or let us say around 900 degree centigrade to 1100 degree centigrade right this will start driving in and form a diffusion layer. After that you can dip this wafer in uh, SiO2 agent and this everything will come out. So, now what you have is you have a P material uh, N material if I take a contact from here and if I take contact from here it becomes your P N diode right. But we are not talking about P N diode we are talking about diffusion. So, now we have this uh, P types uh, of uh, this was a boron doped in N type wafer if you open a window in this particular fashion then you can have a strain gauge this is a cross section uh, of that. Uh, so, now once you have four, 4 of those how can you connect it you can connect it with the metal deposition. Uh, uh, and then uh, we will also see if, if possible if the time permits that how the uh, process occurs. 
So, I will go to the next uh, study right after this. Uh, so, th that is why I was I was showing it to you how diffusion occurs because when there is a force on this particular bridges there is a change in the strain which causes the uh, change in the resistance. Now, instead of normal force if I have uh, angular forces then how my sensor would behave I can I have all the simulation data here that which which uh, sensor would change or which side of the bridge would have more stress compared to the uh, uh, with respect to each other and uh, here also you can have stress versus angular force on all the bridges you can see very clearly that you can delineate those uh, parameters. Uh, uh, if I see the simulation results uh, for the piezo resistor length. Now, first one was about the bridge right what is a bridge thickness bridge line length second one is what is the piezo resistive thickness and uh, piezo resistive length and a width. So, uh, for the line width of uh, 5 microns and for line width of 60 microns how the uh, resistance versus normal force uh, changes uh, for a given piezo resistor this is all simulation results that we have done and you can see. And then once you have this all the data what you can do is uh, you have to use this catheter on to the heart and which heart you can use pig heart because pig heart is very close to uh, a uh, human heart and uh, in that pig heart you can use this catheter and get all the uh, data from the catheter right uh, whether it is the uh, force sensing data or you want to ablate that tissue you can use the pigard. Now, to get the pigard again you have to get the ethical clearance and for ethical clearance uh, you have to apply to institute ethical committee. So, we have got the ethical clearance and then we also got the bio safety approval clearance. So, to use the uh, pigard in our laboratory all right. So, this is how the uh, cardiac ablation will work. Uh, I would uh, discuss uh, uh, other topics uh, in the next module right till then you take care if you any questions feel free to ask me it is not so easy to grab this kind of uh, uh, applications these are little bit towards advanced uh, uh, research uh, or application of your sensors uh, for healthcare technologies uh, uh, with a little bit of advanced side ok. So, you may be uh, confused in some of the slides and if you if you are feel free to ask me questions ok. Uh, but if you uh, uh, again go in depth it is nothing but a force sensor that we are developing with the help of strain gauge to make it very simpler. Whatever force sensing data we get if we, if we can change it to the vibration mode right then uh, the surgeon would also feel how much force he is applying or she is applying on the heart that is the idea and that is why I said smart catheter instead of just uh, catheter. Right. So, I will see you in the next lecture till then you take care.